everybody and welcome to another episode of Draw with Rob with me, Rob Bidolf. Now then, I'm a children's author and illustrator. You might know me from books like this, Blown Away, Penguin Blue and his kite, Windy Day, gets blown away, ends up something, ends up somewhere that penguins aren't usually found. It's a nice one. Maybe you've seen my brand new book, which is called Dog Gone. All about this chap, Teddy. One day he goes out for a walk with his human, loses his human. Anyway, it's a nice story, lots of autumnal colours, lots and lots of dogs in this book. I don't know if you can hear behind me, there is a dog behind me sniffing around on the floor. I've just given him a little treat, a little dog chew, and he's sort of, I think he's finished it, but he's sniffing around the floor looking for more treats. That's Ringo, my dog. So if you hear a little sort of snuffling sound, it's not me, it's my dog. Okay, now then, I've got something very cool to show you. You remember this book, don't you? You've seen this book before, haven't you? The Draw with Rob activity book. Lots of you have got this book. Lots of you have been writing to me and showing me pictures that you've drawn using this book. Well, guess what? Something very exciting to tell you. Because a couple of days ago, a brand new book was published. A brand new Draw with Rob book. Are you ready? Oh, oh gold is all shiny. Look at that. It's the Draw With Rob Christmas book. Christmas activity book. A fabulously festive art activity book. And it's just come out, a couple of days old. This book, so brand new, so you can get it from wherever you get your books. It's a very cool book for Christmas. You probably should start using this at the beginning of December, actually. Look, we have like an arty advent, lots of adventy things to do. We have Christmas decorations. Look, there's a place here for you to write your letter to Father Christmas. There is drawer alongs, of course. There's loads and loads of stuff in it. Do you know what? I'm not going to show you too much now because at the end of this video, I will post a little video of me talking a bit more about this book so you can have a closer look at it. But trust me, I think this is something you're going to love around the Christmas period. So today I thought, you know we always draw a picture, don't we? That's why we're here. It's called Draw with Rob, isn't it? It's not called Talk with Rob, it's called Draw with Rob. So we always draw a picture. So today, because the Draw with Rob at Christmas book has just come out, I thought we would draw something a little bit Christmassy. Now, it's a bit early for Christmas, isn't it? It's a little bit early in the middle of October, a bit early, so I didn't want to go too Christmassy too soon. So I thought we would draw an animal that is associated with Christmas, at least here in the UK, and I think across Europe. This particular animal, which is a bird, is associated with Christmas. Interestingly, it's not associated with Christmas at all in other countries like America, for example. Not associated with Christmas at all. It's only over here. And this bird is the robin. That's right, the robin is a very Christmassy thing here, isn't it? I think it's a Christmas bird here just purely because it's got that lovely red breast, that ready orangey breast, which is a bit of a Christmas colour. So I think, you know, they look good on Christmas cards and that's why we associate it with Christmas. But yeah, if you go to America, they don't have a clue what you're talking about if you say the robin is a Christmassy bird. But anyway, I thought it would be fun to draw a robin together today. So let me tell you how this video is going to work, just in case you haven't seen one before. Lots of people tell me they can't draw. I say, that's a load of rubbish. You can draw, you just need a little bit of help with the order to do the drawing in. So this is how these videos work. I'm gonna do a little bit of my drawing here on my piece of paper. You can pause the video and you copy exactly what I do. It's just gonna be a line or a little shape, something like that. Start me up again, I will draw a bit more. Pause me, you draw. I draw, you draw, I draw, you draw, I draw, you draw. And at the end, we're gonna have a lovely little robin here. So, grab yourself a piece of paper. Grab yourself a pen, maybe grab yourself something to colour with a bit later. A red pencil might be handy in this particular instance. And let's start, shall we? Okay, right, we're going to start like we usually do. Ooh, my, that pen doesn't look too healthy, does it? Can you see that pen? It looks a bit sort of dry at the end. Let's see if I can find another one. Here we go. Oh, that's better, isn't it? A lovely sharp point, a Kurataki brush pen. Right. So what we're going to do, we're going to start right in the middle of our piece of paper and we are going to draw, it's sort of a circle, but the, let me draw mine first before you start because I don't want you just drawing a perfect circle. We are going to start at sort of the bottom right area, area of our circle and we are going to come around like this as if we're drawing a regular circle. But you know what, we are going to 
sort of bring our circle in a little bit before we get to the end. We don't want to join them up. We want to sort of draw a shape like that. So it's a bit like a sort of a very loose swirl, okay? As if you're going to draw a lowercase e, but we stop before we get, before we join it up again like that, okay? So a slightly tricksy first shape with our robin. Okay, next thing to do, we are going to join these two bits up, just in a straight line, like that. Okay. The next thing to do is, inside our shape here, we are going to draw another circular shape. Let's start, um, did you see that? I was like, I can't make my mind up whether to start down here or up here. I'm going to start up here. And what I want you to do, I want you just to sort of follow the shape of our curve round and down and we're going to keep going we're going to keep following it around and we're going to join back up the side here like that okay the next thing to do you remember this line we did here we are now going to keep we're going to continue that line across until it joins up with the curve that we just drew so we're starting to get some distinct sort of areas, sort of shapes of our drawing, aren't we? The next thing to do is, I want you from the point where that line meets this curve here, I want you to draw another curve that comes down and joins up down here. At this point, I'm gonna switch my pen to a slightly thinner one. Okay, next thing to do is I want you to draw few more curved lines following that first curve just up here around like that going back to this pen I'm switching off all over the place aren't I next thing from this corner here we are going to draw a sort of diagonal line straight out like that about what's that four centimeters something like that and then we're going to leave about a centimetre gap there along the top of that line and we're going to draw another diagonal line. It's not going to be quite parallel, it's going to be coming out at a bit of an angle. So it sort of comes out a bit sort of flared at the end. And then we're going to join these two ends up, but we're not going to join them up in a straight line, we're going to join them up in a slight sort of V shape, like that. I wonder if you can start to see our little robin taking shape. I've gone back to my thinner pen now, and what we're going to do is we are going to draw a line from the bottom of that V, straight down the middle of that shape there. And then we're gonna draw another line down the middle of this shape, and then down the middle of this shape. There we go. Okay, so I'm sure you can tell now, hopefully, that this thing we've just drawn here is going to be our robin's tail feathers, okay? Which means this is our robin's sort of tummy, this is his wing or her wing, and this is the head. And this area here is going to be where our robin's face and tummy and all that sort of area is. So should we bring our robin to life? Shall we wake our robin up? Okay, first things first, let's give our robin a beak. So what we need to do here, again, <laughs> Swapping pens, I can't stop swapping pens today. I want you to draw two little lines, about a centimetre apart, not quite parallel, you can see they're just slightly going outwards, just like that, coming out right at the middle of this kind of face area here. And then I want you to, again, we're gonna join them up in with a sort of V shape in the middle of them there. And look, our Robin has a little beak. Now this is cool because we are going to wake our robin up now. We're going to draw a little eye and we're going to draw our eye very close to the beak here. And the way we're going to do our eye today, we're just going to draw a very small circle like that that we're going to colour in. Look, our robin is awake. Isn't that cute? Sometimes if you just do a little dot for the eye without the sort of the, the surrounding area, the white area, it just looks super cute. I think we did a similar thing when we drew the rabbit a few weeks ago. I don't know if you joined in with me with the rabbit, but we did a similar thing there to make the rabbit look extra cute. 
And remember my little eyebrow trick. Eyebrows, that not only can eyebrows make somebody look happy or sad or angry, they can make them look a bit cuter too. Especially if you add it, again, you add it a long way above the eye. So we're just gonna add just a little curved line like that. And look, oh, super cute. Let's add a little tuft of sort of feathery hair to our Robin to give it a little bit of personality. All we're gonna do here, one, two, Three little lines just there at the top of the robin's head. A little tuft of sort of robin, robin-y feathery hair. <laughs> Cute! Now, what's the last couple of things we've got to draw? Can you guess? Something down here? That's right. A couple of legs, a couple of feet for our robin. So, this is how we do the feet. This area here, this curved line where our robin's wing is, just next to that, I want you to draw a little diagonal line coming down, like that. Two or three centimeters long, that's all. And then about a centimeter and a half apart, we're gonna draw another one, exactly the same length, going in exactly the same direction. Just like that. They're gonna be our Robin's legs. And then at the bottom of each leg, we're gonna give our Robin some little feet. This is how we do the feet, very easy. One line, two line, three line four line, a little line out the back. There we go, there's one foot. Let's do the same over here. One line, two lines, three lines, a little line out the back. There we go, our little Robin standing up very proudly. Now, you might have noticed that we drew the little beak here and the little beak was open. And that is because a Robin is a beautiful little songbird. Now, I sit, in my gar I sit in my garden to do my work, to write my books, to illustrate my books. I have a really nice little shed at the end of the garden. Now, I think I've said this to you before, but my shed is like a hide because none of the animals that come and visit my garden, they, none of them can hear or see me in my little shed. And there's lots of glass windows uh, at the front of my shed and I've got some bird feeders just outside my window, literally a foot away from my window. And all of these birds just come and feed quite happily, totally oblivious to me. So I get to see all of these lovely, beautiful birds come, coming to feed right next to me. I have a little chart of birds up on my, up on my notice board so I can see what everything is. And the, by far the most common bird to visit me is the robin. In fact, I think there's the same one's been visiting me for a few years now and his family. And they're lovely, beautiful birds, beautiful birds. And they're so full of song and noise. And they're very tame robins. They're very friendly, they, you know, they'll come very close to you. And there's one particular robin that I really love and he sings very loudly. So I thought with our drawing, we would do our robin singing a little tune. So up here, about four centimeters away from the beak, diagonally up, I want you to draw a little circle that we are going to colour in, a bit like the eye we drew earlier. Then coming up from that circle, I want you to draw a straight line, about that long. And then coming out from the top of that straight line, I want you to draw a little rectangle, like that. There we go. A little musical note. I'm just going to go in here with my thinner pen and make that a nice sharp corner, like that. Then we're gonna draw a little voice bubble. This is how we do our voice bubbles. Now, one of the things with voice bubbles is you should always, if, you're, if there's words in your voice bubble, you should always write the words before you draw the voice bubble. Most people, when they're, especially when they're young and they're first starting out drawing, they will draw the voice bubble first and then they'll try and squeeze all the words into it. But some, it's very difficult to guess how, how, how much space those words are gonna take up. So the obvious thing to do is write the words first and then draw the voice bubble around it. And so now whenever I draw a voice bubble, even if it's only got one little musical note in it like this, I always draw whatever's in it first, okay? So there's a little tip for you. So this is how I draw the voice bubble. We are gonna draw two little lines, like a little kind of arrow pointing towards the beak, like that, and then a nice circle all the way around our musical note, like that. It's not particularly even. I don't think that matters at all. I'm gonna go in with my thinner pen again, just tidy it up here and there, like that. Let's get that dead straight. Add a bit at the top here, a bit thin there. And look, there we go. 
our little robin is pretty much ready for us to colour in. Now then, as usual, I think, you know, I'm not going to say you have to do your robin in any particular colour. It's totally and utterly up to you. I am going to colour mine in the very traditional colour with a nice sort of red breast, a bit of brown here and there, little bits of white and grey and light brown, that kind of thing. Um, and I'm going to go for that, a yellow beak, I think. And um, But it's up to you. It's totally up to you what you do. You know what? I'm tempted to say the more colourful, the better. But you might want to do your little robin red breast, particularly as this is that kind of our very first kind of slightly Christmassy thing that we're doing of the year. So listen, I'm going to colour mine in now. I'm going to see you back here in about 30 seconds because obviously I'm going to go into super speed mode while I colour. So let's do it, shall we? Let's colour in our robins. Three, two, one. Let's go. There we go. There is my finished colored in Robin. Now the eagle eyed amongst you might have spotted that look, I've smudged it a bit here. I did my usual kind of left handed smudginess, which is a thing that happens with these Kurataki pens. They're a bit wet and sometimes I smudge them. But you know what? I was, I will admit to you, I was a bit like, oh no, what have I done? I thought about, for a second, I thought about starting again. But you know what I always say to you, don't start again, don't don't I? You don't screw your paper up and start again if you make a mistake. Just keep on going. Because sometimes those little mistakes, those little happy accidents can be the making of your drawing. And I think in this instance that was the case because I wasn't going to draw, I wasn't going to colour in a sort of sky colour behind my robin until I did those smudges. I decided to do it to sort of cover them up a bit. And actually I think it's added a lot to my drawing. It's made it look like my robin's standing on some snow. So it's made it that little bit more Christmassy, hasn't it? So if you make a mistake, don't just start again, keep on going, because those mistakes can sometimes be the best part of your drawing, I think. Now then, of course, the last thing we need to do here, we need to sign our drawings, don't we? So I'm gonna sign my name down here, Rob. Rob's Robin, there we go. So sign your drawing so everyone knows you created your lovely work of art. Then I want you to get your grown up, take a picture of your drawing, and you can post it on social media using the hashtag Draw with Rob, that way I'll get to see it. Maybe your drawing will make the grid, who knows. If you're watching at school with your teacher, maybe the whole class is doing the Robin draw along. Get your teacher to take a photo of you all holding your drawings up, or maybe just put your drawings out on the floor and take a picture of all of your drawings and then post it using the Draw with Rob hashtag and the class of the week hashtag. And then that way I'll get to see those and I will choose one as my class of the week. And you'll get a little certificate to put up on your wall saying you are the Draw With Rob class of the week. What else have I got to tell you? Oh yeah, stick around. Stick around after this video because you'll see my little face pop up. And I'm going to tell you all about the Christmas Draw With Rob book which has just come out. Which you might like to get. If you do want to get it you might have to be quite quick because I'm told they're selling very quickly. So we don't want, they might run out. But if they run out, we'll print some more, don't worry. But just to let you know, they are selling quickly. So grab yourself a copy, stick around. I'll show you a bit more. I'll show you inside the book after this video and you can have a look and see what you think. But I, trust me, I think you're gonna like it. Something very nice to do in the build up to Christmas. Okay then, I better go, hadn't I? Been talking long enough. I want you all to keep drawing, keep on practicing, be nice to each other, everybody, be kind. I am going to see you very soon for another Draw With Rob video. In the meantime, take care everyone. Bye bye. just when you thought you got rid of me. Here I am popping up again at the end of your video. I just wanted to very quickly tell you about this. It's the Draw With Rob at Christmas activity book. Lots of you have got the other activity book I know and there's more fun in this book here and it's all festive 
themed. So there's loads and loads of things for you to do. We've got an RT advent for you to start off with, where there's something for you to do every single day. We've got blank Father Christmas letter pages. We've got Christmas deck, you make your own Christmas decorations, make your own Christmas cards, lots of coloring, lots of draw alongs. Look, here we go, snowman draw along. Loads and loads and loads of things to do. Look, you can even make your own little box for Christmas gifts. And I have got you covered when it comes to thank you cards too. Look, here, I'm gonna get there. Oh, look, I forgot, nearly forgot to tell you this. This is one of my favorite bits. Christmas cracker jokes. You can cut all of these out, roll them up, and put them around the table at Christmas time. And all your family and friends who are with you, they can each tell a joke, and it's got little charades, and it's got, even got, like, little kind of guess the sketch ideas for you to draw along with each other over Christmas dinner. So listen, I think you're gonna like this. That's what I wanted to show you. Thank you cards, look mums and dads. Ready-made thank you card templates. No excuse not to write those thank you cards, is there? So listen, check it out. It's available wherever you get your books from, online, in person, even better. If you can find it in a bookshop, even better. It's, how much does it cost? 6 99 not too expensive. Perfect stocking filler actually perfect i would say to give to somebody on the first of december so they can enjoy it all the way through the build up to christmas anyway i hope you like it i'm going to see you soon for another draw with rob video take care everyone